All right, so I think we can go ahead and get started. Um, for those who attended since I last or joined since I last said this, uh, feel free to add your topics to the meeting agenda. Um, I'm sharing that now. And we can probably go ahead and get started with the first topic. Um, so, Alvaro. Uh, yeah, can you hear me? Yep. So, and I really want some, just want some suggestions regarding my latest PR, the support for populators on CDI. Um, Michael commented uh, last Friday there regarding the new cross, cross namespace data source and data source ref support on Kubernetes. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I'm just visiting these links. Oops, I had it already. Okay, and so how are you looking to kind of bring this together with your PR? So this is a pretty new topic to me. So I really just wanted some comments and suggestions because I read this and uh, I understand it. I don't really know how to approach this uh, in regards to my PR, or I don't know if we should first merge the PR and then work on this. Uh, honestly, I'm, I don't really know what how to approach this. So one yeah. opinion, go ahead, Michael, I hear you trying to jump in. Yeah, just to like further explain my comment, it's that, um, so just if, you know, say some person has this, you know, it's alpha feature gate now, but if they have it enabled, um, the issue is what will happen is that um, since the data volume controller create will end up creating the PVC, that's the, the um, resource, the reference grants will get um compared against the data volume controller uh, service account and not the user um so uh that's basically the main issue um and i'm not sure how so i think um you know the easiest way to address this is like we could in our webhook say like oh you're you're referencing another namespace we don't allow that now you know reject the request but um, if we do want to um, support this in the future, we'll have to figure out how to do um, this reference grant validation um, in our in our validation webhook when the user creates the data volume. <clears throat> so is it possible that, I mean, since we already have our own um, home cooked uh, cross namespace logic, that for now we're just okay with using that because it's something that's been established and then we'll understand that this uh, alpha feature may graduate to beta over time it may change or or mutate to some degree uh, as they work the kinks out of it and then we adopt it later or we may end up in the future just saying like if you want to do cross namespace stuff create the pvc directly and don't use a data volume for that at least until we're able to support it properly. Uh, yeah, so that would be like basically um, we would so we would just reject the data volume now if it, if it refers to a resource in another namespace, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, it seems like probably the safest way to go since. I mean that the idea of being able to specify a, a namespace on the data source, which is how this thing is implemented, um, is new. So if we just let's see where was the yeah here's the the PVC. So the namespace field is basically the new part, right? It used to just be these the top three. Yeah, so it's totally fine if it, I just wanted to um, make sure that we address this now. So in the PR, we should probably just check that field. And if it's set to something other than whatever the um, target namespace is, we should maybe fail it. 
Mm -hmm. at least for the time being until yeah. we, are, we have a chance to integrate properly with this new alpha feature yeah yeah i think it will yeah and then yeah we'll have to research how to do it i think it may be um yeah i'm not sure how we would integrate with it but um yeah for now we can just say it's not supported cross namespace mm -hmm. uh, yeah maybe... sorry go ahead so uh, i put in a note on the doc i might be missing something but why can't we just uh, do the subject access review thing and uh, verify that the user context could create a pvc like that yeah i think that this this is where i have to i don't know enough about the mechanics of how these reference grant things are implemented so the subject access review uh, says like, can a user create a PVC? Whereas with these reference grants, it's, you know, can a user create a PVC that references a resource? So it's a little different. I'm not sure that the, the you know, I, I don't think that, you know, yeah, because the content you. of the PVC is different. <clears throat> it's not just straight RBAC check. Yep, yeah. They should so probably... One... Yeah. Sorry, go ahead, Alex. Um, so they they would probably I, I got your comment, Michael. They should probably provide something similar to subject access review then, in the future. Yeah, there may honestly uh, this is just something I haven't looked into. There may be a whole API for that reference grant thing that you can um, use a call somehow. Or I, yeah, I just I it just I think it's something that um, you know requires a little more research and. Um, I wanted to just make sure that it was addressed in in some way in Alvaro's PR. Yeah, yeah, one other one other way that it could be supported potentially is to just have the reference grant or yeah the reference grants uh, refer to the service account that the data volume controller is running under. Um, if you want to allow the data volume controller to make such references, um, I mean that's a little bit uh, of a, a huge hammer because that's basically you can say everybody can do it that can use data volumes or nobody can but that could be one way potentially yeah i mean that's definitely um you know if we didn't want to do anything in the pr now that that's one way it would work but i think um the security conscious uh admin would probably not like that yeah so i think we should probably shut it down until we can research it further. Okay, cool. We, sh um, we should uh, also make sure that we have APIs that already contain the namespace field on the data source. So we would need to do that as well. I think we should potentially consider, well, we sh I think it's okay for us to wait on that personally, because this is still alpha as we remember. So I'd hate to chase after an alpha API and then have them change it. But that's just my thinking. No, I mean, just to reject it in the validation, mm -hmm. we, we would need the new APIs, right? Because they made a new namespace field. And that is probably the latest and greatest. And we are importing something older than that. But just a note. Yeah, I'm not sure if the namespace field was always there or it was recently added or what. I don't know if, um, mm -hmm. I don't know. I'll try to write it down. Uh, I'm pretty sure it's been just recently added. Now, does that field appear regardless of the feature gate status then? And it's just that it's only paid attention to when the feature gate is enabled or how, how would Kubernetes handle that if it's in its own webhooks, if it's uh, in the API? Well, it's gotta be part of the PVC uh, definition. So, mm -hmm. uh, so if, uh, yeah, maybe it, maybe only the, um, if it's alpha in 126, maybe you have to have 126, um, you know, client libraries for, for it to be visible. 
Otherwise, yeah. you know, if you use your set to it, it, it will just get removed. Okay, so it looks like a little bit of research. We could probably um, try to just handle it the way that Kubernetes is doing it. Okay, did we have any other points to make on this topic? Uh, not on my side. Thank you. Okay. All right. So why don't we jump down to the next topic? And uh, that belongs to Alice. Uh, so this is something um, if you don't have other topics, maybe it could be interesting. So um, regularly there are Kubert users asking for um, limiting IO with the Kubert. And unfortunately, we don't have a good solution for this. Um, so liver does uh, various options to limit IO, but those options are not supported by Qvert API. Actually for good reasons, because those are pretty hard numbers to find out and uh, expose them to the end user. Um, it's complicated. So uh, that's the main reason why we have an extend Kubert API for this. Um, but still, um, the workaround has been always, we suggested to use Sidecar. Um, however, it doesn't work for Outplug, for example, that was the latest um, uh, user who was asking about this. Um, However, there is a Kubernetes cap about uh, quality of service resources. And we always saw uh, when this is merged, um, except it will be solving this problem, but it actually it's a little bit more complicated. Um, so for IO, basically um, you are, we are relying on C group and C group as a controller that's called block IO. And then basically you can limit the IO per workload. Um, however, this uh, cap is actually only extending CRY. So uh, PV and PVC um, are not uh, listed in the container spec. Um, so there is an issue, I found an issue about this, but it's not really active, I would say. Um, I don't have a real solution, but yeah, I just want to make you, I don't know if you are already aware about this. Aliche, is this, this is local disks or network storage? Because they're quite different. Um, those um, mostly would be devices. Uh, but it could be that you could limit also some attached network, but it will be a device, I mean, a pass, uh, a device at the end for, uh, for C group. Yeah, I think on NFS, this will not work. So the block C group controller, as far as I know, like <clears throat> it works on yeah, the, you specify the device This is another number. aspect. Uh, this is actually another aspect of the problem. So. Um, even if we will have a C, uh, solve this at CSI level, it won't be solved for, uh, uh, for example, NFS or anyway, a directory. For example, if we have uh, OSPA provisioner with a directory, um, we cannot limit uh, you for uh, uh, a single QCOW image, for example, or row image, because we need the underlying device. Uh, we need to to limit the IO with the... Um... Do, so, uh, uh, sorry, go ahead, Richard. I was just gonna say that QMU block layer does allow you to rate limit within yeah. the QMU block layer. So it may be yeah. worth looking at that. Maybe. Yeah, this is actually the workaround with Sidecar. So those options are not supported by Qvert API. I know that QMU can do it. Um, is, um, that if we expose those options in Qvert API, is the user that needs to, to set those values. And we don't want this. It should be the cloud admin that uh, so those values and they should be set it. Um, um, and actually it's what this uh, cap for Kubernetes does. Uh, 
Aliche, um, do you have a link to the workaround with sidecars just for the benefit of folks who do want to pursue it? And you can add it later. I wouldn't want to yeah, distract I you will, right now. Um, so there has been issues. Uh, I can copy a couple um, and then you can reference those. But basically the sidecars um, modifies on the fly the, um, the XML, the Liberty XML. Uh, um, so you can basically add those options. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, I will, I will. Um, yeah, so I'm, so. okay, um, thanks. So I've become curious about, yeah, the mechanism where the enforcement happens, because you raised a good point about how you don't, like if it's in the Qvert VM API, that could be useful when the user wants to limit themselves, but the bigger use case is probably that the admin is allowing a certain amount of, uh, you know, of IO for VMs that, you know, have a certain class. So it'd be interesting yeah. to see how that enforcement piece um, could be done because we could perhaps, you know, have that as something yeah. where Kubevert then modifies the VM definition under the covers according to the policy that's expressed. Yeah. So, so far uh, I have been talking with Fabian about this. Um, we always have refer, um, give this um, Kubernetes uh, cap as the reference. It's not yet accepted, but this won't, um, this won't, won't solve the problem. At least we need uh, some integration um, with CSI. Uh, so basically, um, Kubernetes needs to pass those values to the to the CSI, and the CSI is the one, who, for example, for block device create uh, provision the device and then set the C group for mm -hmm. that device because this cap basically only uh, extend cry. And um, the storage uh, provision by CSI doesn't appear into the um, container stack. Mm -hmm. So this is the Kubernetes part, but then uh, as Vivek already mentioned, it, it won't work for all the, um, for all the storage. So for uh, block devices, it will work because you have the pass. Um, but for example, for directory or uh, NFS, uh, it won't work. Um, mm -hmm. So for a, for a directory, you could find the underlying partition and device and limit that one. Um, yeah, like any native file system will not work. So the enforcement also, happens at the yeah. block layer in the kernel. Uh, sorry to interrupt you, LJ. So like- No, 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 it's like correct. Yeah, so anything which is backed by a block device. So you can do this enforcement at the block device and the C group pairing basis. So you need a backing block device and then it can work. So so I think it was iSCSI and Fiber Channel and Local Disk and uh, like they all have the block device. So I think it should work there. And, mm -hmm. uh, and in recent years, like uh, previously, we didn't support the write back controls, any kind of buffered writes, they were not controlled by the block C groups. But now in recent year, Tizen has done, made all the changes and now we, uh, and file systems have been extended ext 4 XFS that we support the buffered rights as well. So that way, and the C group V2, it should be much better. So yeah. I guess the sole answer will be then, I don't know, like, please pardon me. I don't know much about CSI and all the lingo here, but I guess uh, it could be left to the, uh, the, the software, which is implementing, providing the CSI plugin and the, the one providing NFS will simply deny that I cannot support uh, these IOPS or uh, DPS limits at this point of time until they decide to do so. Yeah, I guess so. Um, yeah, I mean, for NFS, uh, QMU could do it. Um, I mean, there is always this option. Right. Yeah, like the thing we are working on though it's not very popular yet, but uh, yeah, on top of NFS, uh, we are trying to make the yeah. QSD, QM yeah. storage daemon CSI plugin and on top of NFS, maybe that could be a solution where QSD can provide the IOPS and uh, BPS limits. Yeah. 
Yeah, so I guess I'm trying to understand um, if some of that work that you were describing, uh, Vivek, does that allow for like a traditional pod based workload to be controlled um, on the mounted file system via CRI or does it still require some sort of layer like um, QMU provides in order to do that? Uh I, I don't know, like I, I frankly speaking, I don't understand the question when you say traditional pod work. So what we were trying to do is maybe you can figure it out like uh, uh, just that use QST and provide a CSI plugin for that so that it can provide you uh, data volumes which are backed by QCOW2 mm -hmm. and as an option. So, so like, uh, what was the question exactly? I'm just so trying, I'm, to I'm trying to understand yeah. the question. Um, so if I... Maybe, I think I can answer. So I think it's yes, and because but we we need to have the I/O limit from Kubernetes. Uh, that part it's a Kubernetes extension that doesn't exist yet. Mm -hmm. But once yeah. you have those values, then the CSI driver with the QST could take those value and you and use and use them. So I'm just trying to think of the of the scenario where you had like this isn't may, maybe the most sensible configuration, but let's say you have a um, a database like a standard database, MySQL or whatever, running inside of a pod, and it has its database stored on a file system PV. Now this isn't probably the best configuration, but in such a scenario, let's we're talking about being able to limit these file systems. Um, and I was trying to understand if some of those enhancements to C groups V2 were allowing at the, because you were talking about the buffered rights, um, if I remember right. So um, does that allow the, the uh, control of uh, the IO rate to, to a mounted file system for a pod like that um, in that case? So, so uh, sorry. Go ahead, LG. Go ahead. Uh, this part is missing from Kubernetes. That's what I try to mm -hmm. point because uh, the cap basically extend only cry so it means um, the container engine is able to limit the io only for the devices um, listed in the container spec okay so we need uh, so kubernetes somehow needs to uh, take those values um, it's it will be something like a storage class for a io um, it's uh, mm -hmm. it's uh, it's for the resources, so <clears throat> okay. um, it needs to communicate those values to the um, to CSI. Uh, this uh, communication I I haven't seen, uh, and and this will be the limitation for all the storage uh, kind of storage provided with CSI um, mm -hmm. independently I've, from VM. And you guys have pointed this out in the cap review. Um, so there is um, this separate issue I linked there. Um, mm -hmm. They reference the um, quality of service resource cap, uh, but there isn't really, I don't know, there is no, not a real answer. I mean, mm -hmm. I mean, I think it's important that we express this limitation because I'm not sure really what the I guess the, the this cap covers, you know, the other resources. Um, like, I mean, I'm if it doesn't do, it seems to me that the the greatest use case for this is is generally going to be for storage. Um, and uh, not as, only, not only. Um, they try to cover also other other things. I I don't think block I uh, block I is the most interesting. Um, I think they have something like CPU affinity or this kind of things. So okay. it's not only and um, yeah. Okay, I think it's just, I mean, I think it would be important for us to, um, for, you know, someone who's, you know, like you, who's familiar with this to express a concern that this is not going to work well for storage and therefore it doesn't really cover the issue. Um, yeah, I can I can write. I think uh, people have already uh, written this, but I can I can try to. 
I can try to ask what what the plan is. I I haven't, but yeah, mm -hmm. I can. Okay. Awesome. Thanks for raising the topic. It's a good one. Um, anything else on this topic? All right, and I don't see any other topics, so I'll open the floor for a moment here in case anyone had um, <clears throat> small things they wanted us to uh, ask about or any other topics that came up as a result of other discussions. So uh, a while ago, somebody asked about uh, Linstore. So I did mm -hmm. some research into that to see if we can add it to a lane, but it looks like the back end for that is actually proprietary and you have to pay for it. So I, I don't think we can put that in a lane. I just wanted to mention that. Okay, <clears throat> let's see if we can add a, a note about that. Um, I think it was the guy from DDesk that uh, had the question. So. The, the CSI driver and, and all the front end stuff is, is all open source, but the actual back end uh, is uh, closed source, as far as I could tell. Okay. Um, feel free to, uh, to update that log there in the notes here, if you'd like, Alexander. Uh, thanks for following up on that. Any sure. other topics? Um, and there was a, a bug open against CDI uh, that might be interesting to look at. Um, see if Do I can you have find a link? It. Maybe okay. paste the link into this doc and then I will click on it so we can visit. Yes. Uh, let me find it real quick. You know, we've uh, we've had some people look at it already, so being handled, but um, right. basically, basically the, the the problem is. Um, they were trying to use uh, data sources and um, they created a, a data volume out of it before the data import cron had finished populating the source and uh, that caused a, uh, a null pointer um, in the validation. Um, okay. So I think that's definitely something we need to fix. Uh, we had some thoughts on it. I think Michael had some thoughts on it as well. Um, I, I'm like, well, maybe we we shouldn't even try to validate it and, and do the checking in the controller. Uh, but Michael pointed out that uh, we need to check permissions. So. Okay, so any points I see, it looks like a, yeah, as you mentioned, a, a decent discussion having started um, in the PR or in the, the issue itself. Is there any open issues here that we wanted to, to cover? I'm not caught up to this quite yet. Um, I, I think we uh, need to discuss uh, whether the, you know, what we do is just you know, check to make sure the null pointer doesn't happen and, and call it a day, or if we want to uh, think about it a little more and, and see if we, we have a way of implementing what I suggested, which is essentially trying to be more cloud native and allowing you to create the resource, even if the source isn't completed yet. But yeah. then once the source is completed, then we actually start the whole process of populating. Uh, but it might not be possible due to the permission issue that Michael mentioned. Yeah, it seems to me like the the least surprising way that this could behave is that um, the import would just be paused until everything was ready to go, just like we do for, for example, trying to clone from a, uh, another data volume that hasn't been populated yet. Um, it's a, it seems like a similar use case where you kind of have to wait for everything to be in place before you can continue. 
Yeah, that's what I was was thinking when I I wrote the comment. Um, oh, but it's not, yeah, it sounds like you know I understand. I guess with the <clears throat> with the permissions, if you don't know what what it is that is going to be what operation is happening later because you don't know what's in the data source. Right. Okay. All right. Um, so is there any any other comments from anyone here or uh, or would the discussion continue in the in the issue? I, I, I the discussion continue in the issue. I just wanted to point out that maybe uh, if people had any thoughts on it, they could uh, add some some context there. So okay. All right. Any other any comments from anyone? Otherwise, we would um, kindly direct you to the issue um, to put them there as well. We can see what the best approach is. Yeah, to me, it seems like just a pretty straightforward. We shouldn't be. We should check a pointer before um, dereferencing it. Um, it would be a good first issue for someone if they want to fix it. Mm -hmm. Does that, um, does that, I'm trying to understand the security uh, aspect that you were pointing out, but does that, do we still yeah, have We'll security? just reject it. So if, it, if, if uh, you know, it. Okay. Yeah, that, that's a, I guess that's a good like first step, at least to fix the, to fix the actual like null pointer dereference. Okay. I'm going to read the sounds good cool all right um so let's move on from there uh last call for additional topics and then i will uh i'll end the meeting after that all right sounds like we are covered um thanks everybody for joining and for the participation with some interesting discussions once again um so I will, I think I'll actually go ahead and create the next agenda block right at the end of this call uh, so that it will be there if you guys during the course of the next two weeks um, have a topic that you'd like to discuss, then uh, please do visit this agenda and add it. Um, and yeah, I think that's all. So thanks again, everybody. Um, have a great week. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye.